Yeah. Hi, it's Sue Greenwald here with Awakened Stories. I'm here today with Deanna Carr. Hey, Deanna, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? Good, good. Today's surprise topic is the escape from Alcatraz. And if there's a tie-in, maybe to the moon, the landing on the moon. So let me just preface, preface this. Um, Alcatraz was um, has been used for hundreds of years to contain prisoners, but in 1934, it was deemed one of the world's most safe and strong federal prisons, okay, here in the U.S. And I've been there. It's quite impressive to see, even though it's kind of crumbling now. And when you look at it from the bridge or, you know, from the land, it's really very uh, wavy, cold, deep water there. I've seen a submarine go by. So it does seem unlikely that the average person could swim that channel. All right. So... The reason for my inquiry is in 1962, I think it was June of 1962, three people escaped from Alcatraz. Frank Morris, John, and Clarence Anglin all escaped, and they were never found, and that's been a mystery. So big deal, right? I was bebopping around about a week ago, and I'm like, you got to talk about Alcatraz, so that's what we're doing, all right? So question. Did these three guys magically escape one of the world's most impenetrable fortresses? It was called the rock at that time. Or did they have help escaping and leaving the island? They had help escaping. Okay. Um, there was, it's very hard to escape and, you know, have your life at the end of that. Yeah. Um, so they did have help with that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody is like the pro and the con of whether they're alive, like the waters are cold there. And we know on the West coast, um, the, the ocean is super cold over there and it's very deep in the San Francisco Bay. So wavy, cold water. And of course there are other islands they could swim to. The closest one was Angel Island, which is a mile away. And they also say there's sharks there. So I'm you know, again, just another thing to add to the, um, oh, it could, they could never have escaped, you know. Mm -hmm. But so when you say they had had help, um, would you say it was, say, the government or someone in an official capacity that helped them along with their escape plan or whatever they did? It was, let's consider it like a secret organization. So it wasn't just the main stem of the government. It wasn't just the prison that was helping them. Um, they did come in because they acquired um, some of their skill sets for something that they were doing. Uh, so sometimes they don't want people to be known that they're helping. So they kind of snuck them out. Yeah. Um, that is why there was never a body found because there was no body to find. And or they, you know, didn't really get off the islands like everybody right. predicted. Right. Okay. So when, the, when they were helped, like, so the, the story goes like this, that they made paper mache heads of themselves and put these heads in their beds and that tricked the guards. And then they, um, you know, they, they, I think they had rubber rain jackets or something like that. And they, you know, I don't know how they escaped, but that was the, <laughs> that's the story that in the mystery has never been solved. So that's why we're talking about it now. Mm -hmm. So, a let's call it a shadow branch of the government maybe we'll call it help them off the island yes okay so were they specifically at alcatraz to gather information um yes and no they were there it's very complex but they were there because they did need information and it's later going to go into a different type of prison. Um, so they were basically in there to see how it was functioning, how it was running and how to replicate. Okay. All right. Okay. And so when they were helped off the Island, they didn't like have to swim or go in a rowboat or any crazy stuff. They were just taken away mm -hmm. secretly by these other government officials did the prison uh, authorities know that they were taken off the island secretly? Some of them know. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Yes. Some of them know. And so these guys, are they still alive now at this point in time? I'm getting no. Okay. So what happened after that? Can you tell us like what, what happened to them? Okay. So after they were taken, um, they wanted to replicate Alcatraz, but not on our planet. They were replicating it on the moon. So there's theories that have been going around that the moon is a entrapment, a camp for, you know, humans, um, you know, the, the fake moon and everything. Um, and there, there is. So what they wanted was this was the most secure prison type. How can they replicate it onto a different system? How can they replicate it without having, you know, it's secluded. I mean, it's secluded a lot. It's, it's not, you know, just by water. There's a bigger type of seclusion, but how can they replicate it? And that was kind of what they were trying to find out is how the system was running so well. And usually the best way to find out if a system is running well is by being in the system. What was working, what wasn't working, how to replicate. So they were in to test out the system to see what was good, what was bad as far as being uh, a secure and mm -hmm. probably draining to emotion is my guess. Yes. yes. All right. So these three guys escaped, right? And, mm -hmm or were helped off, and then they were actually informants or um, advisors to a special project on the moon mm -hmm. that uh, contained prisoners. Yes. It's really annoying. I did not know that. Okay. And uh, Okay, the reason I wanted to connect this to the moon was a, a few months ago, King Smarty showed a picture of these three guys and he said that they were some of the first ones on the moon or, you know, they were, went to the moon. I was like, is that true? And he said, yeah. Now, he didn't give us the story at the time, but it's been in the back of my mind. And then I was told to talk about it with you. All right. So here we are. But I assumed it was under different pretenses. You know what I'm saying? It was. You probably assumed that they were fake astronauts. Yeah. Um they did they did come off as fake astronauts because they were going to the moon. Um but that is a better way to discreetly hide what they were actually doing there. Wow. Okay. So what he had shown is a picture of these three guys, an old photo, an actual photo. Now, that has since been taken down, just mm -hmm. like with the Black Royal family and some of these other historic photos that go against what we're taught. It's been taken down from all devices. I can't mm -hmm. find it on mine. I know it's. I saved it. I can't find it on his Telegram or Instagram. I mean, we may come across it in the future, but wow. Mm -hmm. right? So they're taking yeah. down all proof that history is, you know, was is different than what we've been taught. Oh, yeah. All right. So what you're saying then is these three guys pose as astronauts. Okay. They were probably in their 30s. They were fairly young. And mm -hmm. um, they pose as astronauts. They go up to the moon and then they're advisors as to a prison system up there. Yes. Is the prison system still in effect right now? Yes. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's being kept in this prison system? A lot of people. Is it a place where people work and then they come back and that's where they live after their job? Or is it just for, we'll call them the bad guys? Or the perceived bad guys? I don't necessarily see it just being bad guys. I see it being a, a mix of people. Okay. So there is not, it's not just imprisonment, it's concentration. Okay. Wow. I didn't actually expect this. So I'm formulating questions as we speak. <laughs> I've heard rumors on other planets that they have basically, we'll call them cells. Mm -hmm. So when the person, the human does their job, does their work, 
they live in the cell with their family and they're locked in. It's like prison. They're given minimum everything to survive, minimal information, minimal food, et cetera, which sounds so primitive and all of that, but I've heard that it's true. And it kind of sounds like it might be true from what you're telling me on the moon. Mm -hmm. yes. right. So we've heard rumors that the moon is divided up into multiple pieces of the pie, if you will, the different yes. societies, civilizations, races, or whatever you might want to call them, um, own or control pieces of that territory. Is that true? Yes. Okay. It's basically neutral ground. So whoever owns a slice is neutral ground. Okay. So we know the moon is really not, you know, a natural body, uh, you know, in our solar system. It's really a spaceship. It's been there a long time. So it's basically been shared by multiple races, civilizations, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. Is this prison on, we'll call it the earth's territory. How else will we say it? It's, it's large enough that it hits multiple territories. Really? So it's, it's shared. Okay. So different like ET races are using this prison system. Yes. Okay. Are the humans, or I don't even know if that's the way to say it, are the beings that are trapped in this prison system, are they just regular people? Like, have they done anything uh, malevolent? They're regular no. people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are these races that are keeping these people trapped, are they malevolent? Yes. Well, that's an, an implied, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else should I ask about this system, this this story? Um. So when when they first discovered, or when they first had the idea of, um, let's build this up on the moon they're actually mining the moon for something else so we have the moon is there for different reasons yes it is um it's there for different purposes there, there's many purposes to it right. one it's you know a shared ground but two there there are materials and minerals that are on the moon that aren't elsewhere so they are mining it so the people that are being taken there are there for a purpose right right they're trying to use them to get what they need right. um some satellite images show these buildings um i don't have access to those images but i'm sure if you do your research you can find them pretty easily right um but these buildings were were meant to be the prison system and then it switched over from being a prison system to more of the concentration idea where they bring in the families, they force them to work and mm -hmm. don't have a choice. You are given the minimum and you just keep working until you can't. Um, they use those three guys because they, I don't know what made them so special that they chose them, but I'm thinking it's because they were willing to do it um who how many people are willing to go into a hardcore prison system and find out data and information sneak out and then replicate it so they had some sort of process some sort of you know mindset that made them valuable to this operation wow Okay, so prior to, like, I did not research these guys, all right, the three mm -hmm. guys. Uh, I, I have a picture of them, uh, but it's not the picture Smarty had, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. just a picture, but, um, you know, they they don't look impressive in any way. So were they, like, like criminals that decided to help, or were they, like, engineers? Were they, you know... I said having more of an engineer mindset, but they were more on obviously the bad side. So they were easily, you know, swayed to help out in the aspect of what they were being yeah. requested. They were also getting compensation. So they were getting stuff out of it on their end. So it made it worthwhile to them. Okay. So after they did this consultation up on the moon, did they ever come back to the U.S.? 
or the war? No, they didn't come back to the U.S. I see them staying in a different country. Oh. And they're no longer alive here on the earth. Yeah, I don't, I'm getting a no for that. Okay. Wow. Okay. What else should I ask? How many different territories or sections of the pie are there on the moon? I'm seeing at least 57. 57? Mm -hmm. I didn't expect that number either. Because that's not what I've been told. So, wow. Okay. So, 57 races, or I guess we'll say it that way, own pieces of the moon. Yes. And it's a neutral zone. They're all like contiguous to each other territory wise. Yes. Wow. And they're all mining for this mineral. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, yikes. That I, I didn't expect exactly what you told me. So, I'm a little bit shocked. And I don't have exactly all the next questions. So we're going to ask for comments from the viewers so that we can maybe address that in a future video. But let's talk about the traditional moon landing story that we've been taught. Okay, so um, I think it was July 1969, the U.S., okay, because that's the only country that matters, right, in our eyes. <laughs> Just joking, guys. The U.S., um, we had three um, astronauts land on the moon. Okay, so we all know who they are, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. Okay, so they landed on the moon. There were rumors that that landing was faked. And I have seen video of mm -hmm. them actually shooting footage of the landing on the moon. And it appears that that was legit footage and it was definitely a fake landing. And then the other day we saw a clip where the guy is screaming at the computer. He's seeing the clip of the moon landing. Who's taking the picture, he's saying. And he's screaming at the computer. And then he's like, how'd you get that lunar um, rover up there? Like, good question, isn't it? And, and we've actually seen that lunar capsule, how physically small it was. How are you going to get three guys in that? So I've always I kind of wondered about that. So let's start out with this. Was the, the moon landing story that we were told about for 1969, was that a true story? Did we actually land three guys up on the moon? No. Dirty dogs tricked us again. Yeah. They're, they're good at filming. And that's really, they're good at, they're good at storytelling. They're good at manipulating a story to appease the people. Right. And um, so, yeah, the footage that, I mean, the guy was right. Who is taking the picture? How do you have a camera out there? They didn't have advanced technology um, like what we have today. So there's a lot of, you know, questions how, you know, they were just developing, you know, technology at that point in time. So how is it that we had direct access to basically a video chat when they're up in space? but they didn't have cell phones at the time. Like, you know, there's a lot of things that don't make yeah. sense just by the technology that was out. Totally. Um, so it, yeah, it doesn't make sense on that point. Um, and then uh, there's many videos showing that these guys have actually started coming out and saying that it never happened. Right. Um, I forget who specifically, but he's been seen in many videos saying, it would have been cool if it happened. Yeah. Oh, I would have liked to do, actually do that. And he's been slipping up um, and people have been catching it. So it's not something that's, you know, we were just thinking about, but now there's more confirmation from the people that have actually gone there. Um, and then, you know, there's also stages of questions of, you know, we're told one thing about gravity and then we're seeing another there's just a lot of questions circulating it. So it definitely did not happen. They did a good show. You know, it's something that still talks about, like you said, it's something that, you know, are we there on the moon? Where was it ever happening? Yeah. Um, people yeah. have gone in space, but it doesn't mean we've been on the moon. Okay. 
I re- uh, all right. So my grandfather, we had a, a newspaper back then. They read newspapers. Okay, for their information, it was like inches thick, and he kept that. He was so proud of America for putting men on the moon. The people were tricked again. All right, mm-hmm. and this is, I think, a pivotal moment in history. We've been tricked again. So. Did you just say that we've never actually landed a man on the moon at all, ever? Not for that purpose, no. Hmm. Okay. Now, we know that we have people up there, so do they portal up, jump gate, portal, whatever you want to call it? Um. Some of it's portaling. Um, there, there are there are still ships that go up there, but they don't go up for the purpose we're being told. Like it's not just, you know, one person going up. That's a big. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of money to just send a few people up there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's there's different purposes for why they go up, but for the most part, it's not what we're being told. Okay, so do our guys, let's say the U.S. guys that are doing this in secret, do they go to the dark side of the moon to land? No, they. It, um, I see their base being kind of in the mix. So sometimes it's on the darker side, but for the most side, it's on the light side. Okay. We're seeing people, you know, the cameras are getting better and better you know, technology on the consumer end is getting better. So we've seen footage of ships coming out of the moon or around the moon, the sun. We're seeing it all over. You know, the ships are everywhere anyway. So it's just very interesting. Um, are they mining for um, a, I, I don't know if we'll call it a mineral, but it's called helium-3. I think that's what it's called. What I'm seeing is this blue-like substance. Blue, okay. Yeah. Um, There could be multiple minerals, but that's what I'm seeing. Okay. For some reason, the word helium-3 has come to me a few times in the past year. And I believe that is, um, it could be used for a power source. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's like just a little bit of it can really, you know, go far away as far as the energy and power it will produce. So interesting. Yeah, and it's a high dollar figure. Yeah. It's worth like probably billions of dollars. So we haven't landed on the surface of the moon to explore at all, ever, ever. Okay. Now I've watched some shows on Gaia TV and they, um, a couple of the guys came on and said, You know, our guys landed on the moon, they got out and there was a whole bunch of craft around the rim and there was some reptilians or whatever on there. And they basically said, get back in and go home and don't come back kind of thing. Did that event ever happen? No. Okay. Just, it's interesting though. There are, you know, reptilians and everything, but they never were told to go away. They had a deal. They were working together. Okay. So they want you to think that, you know, we're good and, you know, we just left and listened to them. But no, we were working with them. Now, yeah, they probably could have harmed the people, but for the most part, they stri- they strike the deal. Um, strike the deal, yeah, okay. So, um, you know how we're clearing up Earth of all the bad guys, if you will. We're cleaning them out. We're exposing all the stuff they're doing. They're getting in trouble. They're getting getting Mm -hmm. taken off or out of earth or, you know, is that also simultaneously happening on the moon right now? Yes. So they're trying to take out the dark ones and it's trying to go into more of the light phase right now. Um, This is happening all over. So it's not just here that's happening. Okay. Good one. Good one. Um, we also have technology to go to planets like, let's just say Mars, right? We've been to Mars. Like when I say we, I mean humans from earth. And Mm -hmm. again, we're the civilians. We're not taught about that, but our people have been all over and we're not taught about it. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. They don't want you to know what, where they go or what they do, because most of it's not good. They want it to be, you know, if these entities come here then oh there are these horrible beings blah 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 
Whereas we've gone to places we should not have gone. Yeah. We're taking stuff we should not be taking. And it's backfiring because now there's this, you know, war going on. Yeah. And everyone's getting mad because there's things that are, you know, just happening everywhere. Yeah. It is changing. Uh, we're getting to that pivotal point where we are going into that positive aspect. Um, but it's just, it's challenging because most of this could have just been altered if the dark never got into power. Okay. Interesting. So you see it shifting that the, the dark forces, and we're talking now, not just the moon, but in the solar system, they're, yes. they're all slowly being exposed and picked off and removed. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Interesting. I mean, it is what we've been taught, you know, by yeah. King Smarty's told us all about it, but it's just good to have a different perspective on the same thing and maybe a little bit more detail, you know, mm -hmm. interesting. So anything else we should know about 57 different um, groups having possession of the moon, okay, or what they're doing there? Uh, like I said, most of them are mining. So they do have, let's say, underground layers. Um, the the moon is a different structure than we think. You know, we think of it as cold, hard ball. Um, that's what we're told. And, you know, things have gone in, hit it. That's why we have these craters. But usually what they're using these craters for are their hiding spots. So they'll create these... Um, let's say trap door where they can go underneath and that's where they've created their space station let's say so it the moon is completely different than what we think it is interesting structurally. i i always just thought it was like you know a big shell with it's hollow on the inside i don't know if it's tunnels or exactly what the structure is but um like i've known for a long time it wasn't what we were told but like, I didn't really have the information that you just gave us. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so there is. So for the moon, there is. It's kind of like Earth in a sense. There's this internal organism that is living and breathing. So, you know, we like I said, we think of it as this dark space. This I don't even want to say hollow. Just this hard ball just floating around us. Yeah. Um, but there is actually life on the moon. Um, we just don't necessarily see it. On the moon, on the surface? No. In the moon? In the moon. There, there's layers to the moon. Okay. Just like the Earth. So mm -hmm. there's like an internal, like an internal moon within the moon. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to describe it. There, there's life in the moon. Okay. It is a living being. Um, and then when you get towards the surface, that's where their lair, their layers are. Um, and that's also where they're mining. So there's this fraction of the moon that they can take this mining and energy from. It's not everywhere. It's only in certain spots. That's where they have to mine for it. Okay. Okay. All right. A lot to think about there. So basically there's life on earth. And and by that, you don't, by that, you're not saying the guys are guys that are up there. You're talking about um, like an organisms. more indigenous species or whatever. No, I'm talking about organisms. Okay. Cells, <laughs> plants, like what are we talking like about? Plants, plants. Plants. Like not just, not just the beings that have, you know, traveled there. There's, there's a living force on in the moon. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, but okay, no, 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 no. It's like think about inner Earth, and then think about if you took that inner Earth and you, you know, had a mystical moon to it, and then you put it in the moon, and that's pretty much what it's going to look like. So use oh. your third eye, imagine that, and you're going to see what that will look like. Okay. Interesting. I think what we need to do is gather more questions. I need to mull on this a little bit more and, and ask more. Is there something I might have missed that I haven't asked you already?
Oh, here's a question. Is is the moon does the moon look the way it does because they've been mining? And the question is yes. Oh. So the moon started to look like that because they started mining. So they've taken out the the plants that were growing on top of it. Things to, I mean, it has been hit by small meteors, but not enough to take it out. Not enough for those craters. Those were dug what dug mining sites. Wow. So think about an an excavator digging out these big holes. In my mind, that, that must have been a long time and a lot of equipment doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they basically took all the plant life off the surface of the moon. Yes. Was there, we're going to call it an atmosphere where they could breathe there. Yes. All right. Is it breathable by humans? It was. It was. Now it's gone. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I recently watched a movie called Moonfall. All right. It was pretty, pretty good movie, but basically Earth, catastrophe is going to you know, blow up, blah, 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 because the moon is out of orbit. But really what it is, it's a, a black goo swarm of AI. OK, some and, and when, when I saw that, I thought of what the unicorn said. It's a world eater. OK, yeah. and it was following the humans around the universe killing them off and we were like the last planet of humans so it was coming down to earth to kill us all so it was a really interesting movie but it had a lot of truth in it you know the ai and there was a guy uh, a scientist in the movie he was like i knew the moon wasn't you know i knew the moon was a structure and i knew this and i knew that and it was like yeah and all that is true very mm -hmm. interesting stuff so yeah, yeah. All right, so there were plants on the surface. There was atmosphere. We could have breathed that atmosphere. Since the plants are gone, the atmosphere is gone. That's not going to happen for a while, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we need to ask? I don't think so. Right. To um, summarize. Um, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going, going to need some comments. questions and comments. So, all right. So these three guys... Um, left Alcatraz in 1962. They were helped off the island. That's why the mystery was never solved. Shocker. And then they were secretly taken to the moon. And this was a shocker where they were consultants for a, an institution on the moon to house the slaves that are mining the moon. Good way to say it? Yes. Really sad. But um, if you guys could leave us your comments and questions, we'll try to get to it in, in the near future. Because to me, this kind of stuff is interesting. And like these little points in history, like you said, are changes. They're changes because they, they change the way we think, what we believe. They change our vibration, our expectation. Mm -hmm. They change everything. So knowing the truth is really important. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else we need to know, Dee? No, I think that's it. Like I said, if you have questions, if I didn't answer anything or if something's confusing, just put in the comments and I'll get to it. Okay. Thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Of course. Bye-bye.